Over the last 20 years, managers have come to realize that competitiveness depends on being able to find and keep talent. They've started to realize that whatever role a person has, their most valuable assets lie in between their ears, their talent. So how does a manager attract and retain talent? According to Marcus Buckingham and Kurt Kaufman, they must first break all the rules. Join us for the next 10 minutes to find out why and what we should break to do what great managers do differently. Lesson 1. The Defining Dozen Buckingham and Kaufman spent a significant amount of time interviewing great managers and researching leading companies to distill the essence of a great workplace. What did they find? By considering the answers to 12 questions, an organization can measure where it is on the scale regarding their ability to attract and retain talent. These questions don't necessarily give a recipe, but what they do is cover the key elements. The questions are 1. Do I know what is expected of me at work? 2. Do I have the right materials and equipment I need to do my work properly? 3. At work, do I have the opportunity to do what I do best every day? 4. In the last 7 days, have I received recognition or praise for good work? 5. Does my supervisor or someone at work seem to care about me as a person? 6. Is there someone at work who encourages my development? 7. At work, do my opinions seem to count? 8. Does the mission slash purpose of my company make me feel like my work is important? 9. Are my coworkers committed to doing quality work? 10. Do I have a best friend at work? 11. In the last six months, have I talked with someone at work about my progress? And 12. At work, have I had the opportunities to learn and grow? By considering these 12 questions alone, we've probably enough to focus on and start revising our talent retention strategy. But that's only the first 30 pages of the book. Buckingham and Kaufman offer much more. So let's press on. Lesson 2. Climb Every Mountain Buckingham and Kaufman don't suggest that we're going to be in a position to address all 12 challenges in one go. They compare progress towards creating positive answers for the 12 questions to climbing a mountain, and that aligning our companies to the questions is a journey. The first stage is base camp, and fundamentally helping our staff understand what the expectations of working for us are. What are they expected to do? How much can they expect to earn? Can they expect an office, a desk, a workstation? Effectively, they ask, what do I get? Aligning to the first two questions. The second stage is Camp 1. Having settled into the role, staff begin to ask different questions. Are they doing good work? Are they in a job where they can excel? Do others recognize this? Will others help them get better? They focus on their individual contribution. This aligns to questions 3, 4, 5, and 6. Next, it's Camp 2. It's all about belonging. They are comfortable with their contribution, but does it really align to the company? Are coworkers similarly committed? Can the company offer support for the long game, or do they need to move on? Here, questions 7, 8, 9, and 10 are addressed. Camp 3 beckons and the summit is in sight. Here it's all about teamwork, pulling together in the same common and forward-moving direction. It leads to innovation, building and growth for self and the company. The last two questions, 11 and 12, are raised. With positive answers to all 12 questions, the summit has been reached. Focus is clear. Staff feel a sense of achievement, of belonging, of being in the zone at work. It's a great place to work with a great manager. So how does a great manager create this feeling? According to Buckingham and Kaufman, they apply four skills, four rule-breaking actions. Lesson three. Key number one, select for talent. Traditional managerial convention says that when we're recruiting, we should select a person based on their experience, intelligence, and determination. Buckingham and Kaufman say, break this rule. Great managers select for talent. Great managers disagree with the common definition of talent. It's too narrow. In their mind, talent is a recurring pattern of thought, feeling, or behavior that can be productively applied. The right talent is fundamental much more than experience, much more than brain power, much more than willpower. 
They need to nurture talent to succeed. Skills and knowledge can easily be taught. Talent cannot. Skills are the how-tos of a role. They are the traits that can be passed on from one person to another. Buckingham and Kaufman break talent into three categories. Striving talents, the why of a person. Why they do things, their drive, why they are who they are. Thinking talents, the how of a person. How they think, how they rationalize decisions, their values. Relating talents, the who of a person. Who they trust, who they confront, who they ignore. As a manager, we need to know what talents we want. At selection time, we need to look beyond the job title and description. Which talent is more aligned to our needs? Are we looking for drive? Then striving talent is our target. Are we looking for logic? Thinking talent is best. Are we looking for communication? Choose someone with relating talent. We need to think about how the person will fit into our organizational culture. Different companies require different talent types. We need to think of our team. Where is their talent alignment? Where is the talent gap? It's not easy. Talent spotting is a talent itself. To help, Buckingham and Kaufman suggest we identify one critical factor to each of the three talent categories and focus on them during selection. We should structure our interview technique around seeking out those who hold the right blend. Lesson four, key number two, define the right outcomes. Managerial convention also states that when setting expectations, we should first define the right steps. Break this rule too. Great managers define the right outcomes. As a manager, we may think that we're in control, but we're not. Our staff, the people who report to us, have more. They can ultimately decide what they will do and how they will perform. So how can we maintain direction and performance? Buckingham and Kaufman tell us that great managers define the outcomes what they want to happen, then let their staff decide how to get there. A side benefit of this approach is that staff take on responsibility. By making the choice of how things will be done, they are accountable for the outcomes. Letting staff take on responsibility does not mean we have to relinquish everything. Buckingham and Kaufman give us rules of thumb to follow. Rule of thumb number one, don't risk it. Employees must follow certain required steps for all aspects of the role that involve accuracy or safety. Rule of thumb number two, standards rule. Employee must follow required steps when those steps are a part of the company or industry standard. Rule of thumb number three, don't let creed overshadow the message. Required steps are useful only if they do not obscure the desired outcome. Rule of thumb number four, there are no steps leading to customer satisfaction. Required steps only prevent dissatisfaction. They cannot drive customer satisfaction. All of these rules create a framework to allow a focus on outcomes. They identify what must remain and what can be given away in the process of achieving the desired outcome. Lesson number five, key number three, focus on strengths. Managerial convention states that when motivating a person, we should help them identify and overcome their weaknesses. Break this rule. Great managers focus on strengths. Good managers don't try to fix weaknesses. Good managers have recognized the unique talents of individuals and therefore focus on the strengths these bring and work around the weaknesses. Great managers build roles for people around their strengths, not around organizational hierarchies. This means that staff can focus on what they are wired to do. If we want to be a great manager, we must openly discuss strength exploitation with our staff. We need to sit down with them and say things like, Bob, you are good with words. I want you to be our marketing copywriter. Treat people as you would want to be treated. We've all heard the guidance many times. Great managers ignore it. They recognize that behind the statement is conformity making everyone similar. It also implies that we know best. But are we better than everyone else in each of their roles? I doubt it. Great managers treat staff as the staff wants to be treated. When a great manager sits down with a staff member, they're not fixing or correcting, they're looking for ways to further exploit the individual's talent. They seek to highlight and perfect the individual's unique style. They seek to create ways to help the individual avoid interference and help them focus on their strengths. 
Lesson 6, Key Number 4, Find the Right Fit. Managerial convention states that when developing a person, we should help them learn and get promoted. Break this rule. Great managers help find the right fit. At some point in their employment, a staff member will ask their manager, what's next for me? Where do I go from here? Great managers help staff find roles that further expand what they're good at. What a manager should not do is promote to fill gaps in an org chart. Frequently, good workers don't make good supervisors. Great managers are good at feedback. They don't leave it to an annual performance review. After all, they're always on the lookout for better ways to exploit strengths, so feedback is constant. As a result, great managers are always aware when the next opportunity will come. Their role is not to protect the organization by pigeonholing staff. What they strive to do is better the best. A great manager puts their staff on the right path and simply gets out of their way. So there you have it. 12 questions, 5 levels, and 4 keys to breaking lots of rules and building better teams. Hi, I'm Rhonda, and this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!